Hey guys, welcome back to One Seed, One World. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me again today. So, you know, with gardening and like with my channel here, I, I show you a lot of the beautiful things that I'm growing and, uh, you know, get the overhead shots of the raised beds. And, you know, we talk about different plants and diseases and chickens, bees, and other things too. But normally you see like all the beautiful things and uh, not a whole lot of when things go wrong. So today I wanted to kind of show you the ugly side of gardening, especially, you know, if you're a beginning gardener, a new gardener, you may not have had enough seasons yet to maybe experience um, the various things that can go wrong, uh, whether it's under your control or not. And I just wanted to show you that not everything is always super pretty and doesn't always come out the way that you want it to. Mistakes were made but don't lose hope. Sometimes, you know, it's stuff that you can't control. You know, the too much rain, not a, you know, drought, not enough rain, uh, all kinds of pest problems, hail, disease. You know, there's different things that you can do to help mitigate some of these things, but you're not always gonna be successful. And sometimes even when you try your hardest, you might miss something um, or it might not work and things don't go as planned. So, behind me is my hoop bed and this has been in previous videos I showed you how to build one of these I showed planting my brassicas in here and just a couple weeks ago I showed you uh, harvesting some really nice heads of cauliflower out of here in my tips for uh, how to grow cauliflower video however if you're gonna cover a bed with your row cover whether you just do the makeshift ones or build something that's more permanent like this you have to make sure that it's completely covered because the bugs will still find a way. Let me show you what I did. So you see here, I've got the nice covered bed, got the bro cover all connected on there. Everything looks hunky-dory, all nice and protected plants, right? Well, there was something that I missed and it was a big something. Check this out. I missed a spot with covering it up. I had it pinched up here and it was not covered because this wasn't completely airtight, you know, with my top. And there's an opening big enough to get my fingers in there. You know what else can get in there? Cabbage moths. And this is what happens when cabbage moths find a place to get in. All right. All right, so let's take a look at the brassica crop. Or should I say what's left of it? Absolutely nothing. So the cabbage moths found a way to get in, laid their eggs, and the cabbage worms, within a week, took all big beautiful leaves that looked like this, minus the holes in them, but you can kind of see I had great big leaves, and turned it into a wasteland. But can you see all the little worms on there? Pretty gross, right? There, maybe they come in clear now. So it wasn't a complete loss because I did get four some nice heads of cauliflower out there, but I had several more small ones coming in that I was hoping to get a bigger crop. Now, I can start some more cauliflower and, or cabbages or other things inside uh, that I can then plant probably about mid-August and fix my hole in my cover and get that going okay. <clears throat> and then hopefully have a, a good fall crop. So all hope is still not lost because, you know, the brassicas, they're cold tolerant, so they can go later into the fall 
for harvest than some of your other plants like tomatoes or peppers or that kind of thing that aren't quite as fond as the, of the cool weather. Uh, so, but that's not the only loss this year. Let's show you another one. Remember that big beautiful zucchini plant that was uh, on my garden tour video if you saw that a week ago? Look at it now, completely dead. This is probably a mix of both the squash borer bug and also the, your regular squash bug, which can, um, while they do eat your leaves, they also spread disease like leaf wilt and other fungus type issues. Um, so I think I have a combination of both. Uh, because of how fast this went, it was probably the squash borer bug that took out the most of it. And this is why I was saying it's good to have succession planning. The one, if you can kind of see it in the glary light over there, that's the one that died off first. And we had already got like 20 zucchini off of that over there. But this one was still looking so good that I was hoping that this would last like, you know, be fine for like another month until uh, the new zucchini plants started coming in because I did some succession planning and I planted a late crop and that I'm hoping will come up for late summer. But it looks like we're gonna have a gap in zucchini. I've got a couple in there that I can harvest right now. They're smaller, but that's fine. They're, they're good and tender. Uh, but that will be the end of that zucchini plant. So I didn't wanna end on all bad news. <clears throat> I wanted to end with a little bit of beauty here. Not me, the zinnias. Uh, my zinnia row has done beautifully again this year. That lines my uh, pathway next to the greenhouse, so I'm very happy about that. They're all coming into bloom, look very nice. And so <laughs> there's been some successes and failures this year. Um, I would say probably more successes than failures, and hopefully that's what you're running into too, and that you are still getting harvest uh, or blooms or other things that uh, are still making up for maybe things that you've lost along the way. But, you know, every season is a learning experience and you only get so many seasons. You know, hopefully if you're younger in your 20s or 30s, you know, you will live a long life and have many seasons of gardening to learn new things, learn new plants, fight new pests, fight new diseases, um, and get the full I don't know, the full run, the full gamut of, of gardening and, and get all the joy out of it. Um, and when things fail, you learn either the mistakes that you made or maybe ways that you can fix the problem next year. And so don't, I know it's, it, it's frustrating when you put a lot of work into starting tiny seeds, especially like if you start them inside early and you've been nurturing these plants and you bring them outside and you can't wait to get the harvest. And then, you know, maybe you get a couple things and they die or before you get anything, they get killed off uh, or a rabbit eats them or a deer eats them or bugs eat them. You know, there's all kinds of things that can happen to your plants. And when you put all that hard work into it, it can be very frustrating and make you say that you never want to garden again. But I encourage you not to do that. I've had some summers where almost everything failed um, due to bad weather and other things. Uh, and then I've had other years that were years of plenty that just gave me so much produce I didn't know what to do with. So just because something fails one year doesn't mean that you're gonna have that same issue the following year. And you're gonna learn ways to combat it, you're gonna get better at it, and it still isn't always gonna work, but you're gonna get better and you're gonna get lots of produce and get the joy out of the gardening. So keep at it. Because Mother Nature gives, give, giveth and Mother Nature take it away sometimes. Um, but you just gotta work along with it and it'll all come out in the end and you learn a lot along the way. So, just wanted to share that with you, that it's not always, you know, all just beauty and, and perfect harvest every year. There's always issues every single year. So keep at it, keep playing in the dirt. But thanks for hanging out with me again today and I hope to see you again soon. And whatever's going on in your neck of the woods and in your gardens, greenhouses, chicken coops, whatever it is that you're doing, I hope that it's working out fantastic for you. And uh, I guess that's about it. Namaste, everybody.